hello so very good morning to all of you so this is uh, the lecture for molecular mechanics or force field method 2 okay so in the initial first lecture of molecular mechanics we have discussed that how we can express the uh, molecules in the form of uh, ball and spring model so molecular mechanics basically uh, use of classical mechanics to explain the molecular phenomena so we uh, said it as molecular mechanics so now uh, we have expressed the energy in molecular mechanics uh, in the way that uh, E is equal to summation of E stretch, E bend and E torsion and E non-bond. Okay. So this uh, uh, at the reference point we said that the molecules are completely relaxed state means it is in the equilibrium geometry. So whatever we want to distort the molecule, we deform the molecule. then energy will change okay and that can be expressed by this expression uh, now we will uh, explicitly define that how the uh, uh, e stretch functions will look like or all the other uh, one how mathematically they can be calculated okay so the bond stretching term so let's uh, consider a bond that is in equilibrium that is these uh, two atoms and this is the spring it's the and it is in the equilibrium length so when you uh, want to increase the bond or stretch the bond then what will happen the energy will uh, approximately be proportional to the square of the uh, extension uh, of the length so uh, this can be delta e stretch is equal to k stretch l minus l eq square okay so this is a very general formula to uh, calculate the energy uh, change during the stretching of the bond and k stretch is the actually proportionality constant and it defines that how stronger the bond is so if it is very strong means the bond is very stiff and if it is very uh, small then it will be very loose and it can easily uh, stretched okay and uh, l eq is reference bond length that is we can say equilibrium bond length and if we take that the energy uh, at the reference point is 0 then we can uh, remove the delta and we can simply write that E stretch is equal to K stretch into L minus L EQ square ok so next go uh, to the bond bending term so bond bending term can be similarly expressed by uh, this way that here uh, three atoms are required for a bond so like A B C so that has also an equilibrium bond angle but when you wants to uh, change the bond angle then uh, the energy will change and that expressions can be very simple and similar to uh, like bonding uh, stretching of the bonds uh, is equal to k bend a minus a eq square okay so k bend is also a proportionality constant which determines that which uh, how much resistance you will feel when you wants to change the angle okay a size of the angle uh, that is distorted and aq is the reference size of the angle so these are uh, two mathematical expressions which we have uh, told now that uh, uh, both are for uh, stretching of the bond and bending of the bond. Next uh, we will express the torsion angle and torsion angle you uh, actually it is the dihedral angle you know that so we need the dihedral angle means there are angle between two planes so if you uh, consider this A, B, C, D molecule here it's the angle uh, between the if ABC if you consider a plane that which contains ABC atom and another plane which contains BCD atoms then uh, the angle between these two planes are called the dihedral angle. So how can you uh, look at this dihedral angle? So if you put your eye in this uh, through this bond the BC bond then uh, you can uh, uh, what is the difference between a and d it's look like uh, is the difference will be your bond uh, dihedral angle okay so here is a shown uh, in uh, in human projection so if you uh, are put the bc in the axis uh, your uh, axis then uh, this a and d so here in this geometry this dihedral angle is zero because your uh, it's in the same orientation but if uh, in this cases it is d is uh, around 60 degree uh, after rotation so this dihedral angle is 60 degree okay so dihedral angle actually affect the molecular uh, geometries and energies also and this energy is a periodic uh, function 
so let's see how this uh, uh, with this rotations the how energy is changing periodically okay so here two uh, energy plots are given uh, one is for uh, uh, ethene and another is for butadiene okay so uh, as you have seen in the potentialized surface also that when uh, it's in the eclipse form the energy is high when it's coming staggered the energy will be low and again it will be high and low like that so as the molecules again uh, takes uh, its same geometry it's the it reach the identical geometry after 360 degree rotation so it's the two point in after 360 degrees will be both the same and again it will uh, repeat the same cycle what is started from 0 to 60 uh, 360 and 362 another 360 will be the same cycle so this is a periodic movement going on and also here uh, it's a uh, for ethane it's a uh, sewing and it is also periodic but it's little bit more complicated than the ethane or acetylene okay so periodic uh, functions we know that we can uh, express the periodic function as uh, the form of sine or cosine so we can uh, write here that e torsion is equal to the is the form like e is equal to k0 plus summation of r is equal to 1 to n means for all the right angle kr1 plus r uh, cos r theta okay so this is the uh, expressions of the uh, changing energy due to the uh, rotation of the uh, torsion angle okay so next uh, we will discuss the non-bonded term that uh, when the, the, this non-bonded uh, term represents the change in potential energy with distance and that is not directly connected or not connected through a common bond uh, like AXB this must be connected uh, through at least two atoms like AXYB so there will be two atoms AX and Y between A and B so or this can be even in different molecules okay so uh, this potential energy of this type of potential energy can be expressed uh, by Leonard Jones potential which is the famous potential uh, which is used to express the uh, two non-polar non -polar, non bonded atoms okay so you know this expression is that it's a k n b this is the bond uh, uh, non bonding constant uh, constant and that is a sigma by r to the power 12 minus sigma by r to the power 6 so r is the distance between the centers of non-bonded groups and sigma is their collision diameter okay so from uh, this uh, potential if you plot uh, this sigma uh, energy versus r what you can see that when r is uh, high then this will be operative and as this is negative so energy will be decreasing so at certain level energy will be minimum and when r is very small then this term will be operative and it has this is a positive term your energy will uh, steeply rise so this is the uh, form uh, plot of this uh, equations so this actually explains the uh, van der waals interactions okay so the function actually reproduce a small attractive interactions so this zone is actually attractive means the molecule atoms are coming each other and then when it's uh, reached their collision diameter or minimum length and even if you want to squeeze more then energy will rise very high okay so in this way in this using this van der waals expressions we can uh, actually express the change of energy due to non-bonding interactions so another uh, term of the non-bonding interaction is that the if you have the two uh, atoms are uh, have some charges so they will have some polarity so we have to consider then the electrostatic interactions okay so uh, this electrostatic interactions actually uh, this type of non-bonded interactions is uh, happening due to uh, internal redistribution of the electrons that is the creating positive and negative charge parts in the molecule for example in a carbonyl group you have a negatively charged oxygen and positively charged carbon atoms so they can interact uh, with another uh, such type of dipole okay so at the uh, simple uh, uh, simple cases it can be uh, actually expressed by some uh, coulomb potential which is the general potential for electrostatic interactions so uh, if we express this uh, electrostatic energy for a bond ab uh, for a uh, uh, 
atoms uh, for non bonded interactions uh, between the atoms a and b then it will be qa qb by epsilon rab where epsilon is the dielectric constant of the medium okay so the atomic charges uh, you know you have to get these atomic charges to get the final expressions of this electrostatic uh, interactions so this can be assigned uh, from the empirical rules or it can also calculated from the electrostatic uh, electronic structure methods okay so another uh, electrostatic uh, interactions are you can uh, consider the hydrogen bonded which uh, bonding which is uh, one of the most important uh, uh, bonding characteristics in the in chemistry so hydrogen bonding is also uh, uh, one type of uh, electro uh, electrostatic interactions that ha happens due to attraction between the electron deficient hydrogen and an electronegative atom such as oxygen or nitrogen okay so a proper choice of partial charges may be adequately model also these interactions okay so we have a set of equations with their associated constants now we have a set of four uh, equations actually for uh, bond stretching bond bending and torsional uh, distortion and also the electrostatic uh, uh, so non bond interactions that is uh, for uh, maybe leonard jones or electrostatic so there are so many uh, constants are there okay now in our expression so uh, how uh, we can get this constant actually and this uh, getting this constants so these are uh, have some values so th to get this constant uh, term actually is called the parameterization means that you are collecting the parameters and you are making uh, uh, you are getting the energy of certain molecule using molecular mechanics method okay so uh, there are more uh, sophisticated methods uh, uh, form of force field may possible for example if you wants to calculate the bond stretching more accurately then what you have to do you have to uh, also incorporate some cubic term but for a general approximations uh, this is enough for uh, expressing the energy so we have taken up to this only square term okay so now let's see the parameterization of the force field so it is nothing but to get the value of this k stretching l equilibrium or k bend all this uh, all this uh, equilibrium values we need as well as the bond uh, strength means that uh, uh, k stretch or k bend or k torsion okay so uh, how do we do these things <coughs> and the to getting these uh, values actually called the parameterization so we can uh, do this by uh, taking some sets of molecules that we set we will set uh, a training set okay for example we can take ethane propane butane all of has uh, some uh, CSP3 CSP3 bond okay so we can uh, we can actually get, uh, get their length uh, CC bond length from these all these three molecules ethane propane butane from any spectroscopic or uh, data or higher level ab initial method then what will happen we can make an average for this uh, length of these three cases then we can uh, from this average we can uh, determine that okay that L equilibrium the bond length at uh, equilibrium bond length will be the average of these three um, uh, calculations okay and now we can use that bond length of uh, uh, for any unknown molecule c sp3 c sp3 bond okay so in this way we actually take the pair uh, first do the value calculate the value for uh, a set of molecules then we use that value for our some unknown molecules and that is called the parameterization okay so performance of this technique or this molecular mechanics technique will depend on four factors first of all the functional form of the energy expression means what we have uh, said earlier that this mathematical expressions if they are not useful to replicate uh, the experimental properties then it will not be useful so uh, the useful uh, uh, molecular mechanics will be more useful method if our uh, approximations which we take as the uh, functional form like uh, in these uh, equations if these are all uh, correct then it will be uh, more useful and the data used to be used to parameterize the constant because we are taking the training set uh, if you take uh, more and more molecules uh, to consider a c sp3 c sp3 average bond length then your uh, data set will be more improved and you will get more accurate result and the technique i used to optimize the uh, constants from the data 
and the ability to of the user means that ability of the programs how it can actually uh, used to calculate the strength and weakness of the uh, method okay so there are uh, some advantages and disadvantages of this method so advantage will be that molecular mechanics calculations are ex extremely easy and this is very fast okay so we can uh, calculate uh, as much as big molecule like proteins which has thousand and five thousand atoms maybe and segments of dna it also models uh, intermolecular forces very well so this is why it actually used in the computational uh, tool of computational biochemistry but there are so many disadvantages also that as molecular mechanics does not include electrons or electron density it cannot explain any type of electronic phenomena for example spectroscopy reactivity or electronic side states like that since chemical bonding terms are explicitly included in the force field it is also not able to uh, model the bond breaking or bond making process because already we have defined uh, some bond uh, bond energy and bond length so and it can be only if, if you stretch then energy only will calculate but it cannot ex uh, actually consider the breaking of that bond so we cannot actually model uh, any chemical reactions using uh, mole molecular mechanics techniques and molecular methods are not also generally applicable for structures uh, for very far from equilibrium such as transition structures and we have few concern also related to parameterization so if you do your parameterization very well using a large set of training uh, set of molecules then your calculations might be more accurate and the best way to choose the force field is to look the similar studies in the literature uh, so if you want to uh, explain express your cc bond length of a particular mo molecule then what you have to do you have to take the similar uh, set of data from there you can uh, get the value exactly and from the accurate ex experimental results also you have to validate your results with accurate experimental data okay so thank you this is for all uh, molecular mechanics method in the next class we will uh, start uh, our ab initio method for computation thank you very much